Hey everybody, welcome back for another five o'clock conversation, a little curling conversation we have with us today. Quite a special guest, um, Betsy Lavoie, uh, that's French, Lavoie, is a Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce CEO. She's the president. She's a Fountain Hills resident of 41 years, mother of two school-aged children, as you can tell by the periodic table and the world map behind her. She possesses a BA degree in Spanish from ASU, and she's here to talk to us about everything Fountain Hills in the pandemic. How are you, Betsy? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on this evening. Oh, love it. Hey, uh, I want to make sure that we put the disclaimer out there. Betsy does work for an organization that does do uh, endorsements, but this is in no way an endorsement of the curling candidacy, no matter how good it's going to be. This is just her getting information out to her Fountain Hills peeps. And if anybody out there has a small business, you might find it useful as well. As always, type in your questions in the bar there, and our wonderful assistant, Andy Gomez, will type them into us on the Zoom, and we'll try to get those answered for you. Um, let, me, let me start off right away with how are you and your family doing? Thank you for asking. We're actually doing great. Uh, as most families were really busy normally and with after school activities and work and just, you know, the busy, normal mom life. And I have enjoyed having my kids at home. So we're still very busy. We're schooling at home is very busy. And of course, my job keeps me um, just a little bit busy, but no, extraordinarily busy. But I love having them at home. So we're doing great. We're really blessed that we are healthy and well and happy and uh, we're doing really good. How about you and your family? Oh, well, thank you for asking. One of the few people that has. Uh, we are just kind of struggling to survive here because we hate each other. The three <laughs> of us are at each other's necks. No, it's actually, it's been really quite lovely. Uh, we've talked about trying to exploit these kinds of situations for what they're good for. And um, Right now, I have to say that uh, we have a more family time. We have a set structure about when we eat dinner and we're having uh, pointed conversations. I think we're getting to know each other even a little better than we did before. Right. So. Now, my internet, my internet connection is a little unstable. So if I go out, Andy will come in and do the questioning for you. But hopefully, we'll just be able to survive. Hey, tell me about... so. First of all, this is extremely difficult on businesses. Mayor Dickey was one of the first mayors to ask for this kind of a shutdown. She was uh, really concerned about uh, the population and their health, as are a lot of people. And we are where we are. But how, how is it accessing funds from the, um, the federal government with the small business loans. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. We've taken a real proactive approach at the Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce surrounding communication, just to make sure that all of our local businesses knew about the EIDL loan, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, the grant that was a part of that, um, and also the PPP, the Payroll Protection Program. And we spent a good Gosh, I would say three solid weeks calling every single member, doing Facebook Live videos, sending out text messages, sending out CEO updates to make sure that everyone knew what was available to them for the economic relief programs. Um, unfortunately, the funds did run out last Thursday, a week ago today. Um, in the morning, we were told by the Small Business Association that the CARES Act was depleted of all funds. And so it's been hard. Quite honestly, Eric, it's been hard because a lot of our local businesses did not have the opportunity to receive the funds that were available to them. Um, I know that the self-employed people, independent contractors especially, they were not able to apply until April 10th, which was a week ago Monday. And then the program kept changing. And when they finally had the program in place for those entities, the independent contractors and self-employed people, the funds had literally run out almost simultaneously. And so it's just, it's unfortunate. I'm hoping that with the next round, we'll see a different result. Yeah, and, and part of what um, the issue is, I think, is that the larger banks that were doing these loans looked at their established customers Correct. 
and kind of, it, it's almost like insider trading, you know, where you got the information first, you're the big fish and you swallow things up until there's nothing left for the guppies. Is that right? That's exactly right. And the fact that the payroll protection program was for companies under 500 employees, to me is a big red flag. The, the companies that have 20 or less employees are the ones that should have been looked at first. The small mom and pop local businesses are the businesses who need and deserve and really um, are almost in crisis mode. They need those funds right now. Okay, so we're talking to Betsy Lavoie. She's the president and CEO of the Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce. Please type in your questions and we will do our best to get you some answers. Uh, Betsy, so let, let, let's kind of go back through this whole thing. You as the Fountain Hills Chamber and your organization, uh, you might not have the exact number, but do you have a round number of how many businesses are in your little enclave of Fountain Hills? Well, I know as a chamber, we have approximately 400 members. If you were to include all of the home-based businesses, I would put it over 6,000 businesses. Um, I don't know how accurate to the, to the number that number is, but it's approximately around that number. And I know that less than 50% uh, were even given the opportunity to apply for those programs. Wow, so less than 50%, a large, large number just in Fountain Hills. Any idea how many actually got funds? Well, we just uh, sent out a survey through the EVCCA. That's the East Valley Chamber of Commerce Alliance, and it's an alliance of other chambers working together to lobby on behalf of our business community. And we just asked for that type of information. So we should have those results in the next couple of days. But from what I've personally heard from our outreach to our, our members, it's easily less than 20% actually were funded. Wow, one in five. Yes. Wow. Um, tell me, uh, do you have a website that we can put into the Facebook so that people who are in Fountain Hills and want information on the chamber can get that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for asking. It's fountainhillschamber.com or just fhchamber.com. Both will go to the same spot. That's oh. our website. And then we also have two Facebook pages. We have our regular chamber page, which is just Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce, um, our Facebook page. But then we also created a COVID-19 resources page. And we created that because there was so much information surrounding the economic relief programs and we wanted it all in one spot for our business community. And so they can go, anyone could go to either one of those pages. And we are very responsive to the entire business community. So whether you're a chamber member or not, we are here to help you and support. Fantastic. There's no paywall on the website. People can go get the information. So let's just be clear. Yes. Um, fantastic. So you're a community service, basically. Absolutely, we are. The largest, largest civic organization for pro-business um, in Fountain Hills. Great. And, and the link for the COVID Facebook page, that's a separate one? Yes, it is. It's is it on you? Go ahead. It's Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce COVID-19 Resources. I know it's a long name, but if you just go to our website, there's a red link right at the top of our page that'll lead you directly to that page. FH Chamber of Dot Commerce. Com. Yes. FHChamber.com. Perfect. Yes. Okay, we'll get that into the Facebooks uh, so that people who are looking right now can write that down and Thank visit you later. Remember, we're talking to Betsy Lavoie. She's the president and CEO of the Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce. Type your questions in and we'll get those to you. Uh, all right, so Betsy, let's, let's you know, talk about the Payroll Protection Act. Is that, any, you know, PPP? What's going on with that? Well, um, on the, the chamber end, it's a little unfortunate that 5016Cs were not included. So it was for typical businesses under 500 employees and for nonprofits, the typical 5013Cs. But there are a lot of organizations like our Neighborhood Property Association, NPOA, that's a 5014C, Chambers of Commerce or 5016Cs, and none of us were eligible for any of these programs. And we're all giving everything we've got in support of local business. And so, um, hoping again in the next rollout that that might look a little bit different but regardless we just hope all of our businesses will have the opportunity even if they don't get fully funded they get partially funded or at least the opportunity for those programs 
How uh, responsive have our federal senators and our representatives been? I imagine you've tried to talk to them, say, hey, this isn't working for us. This is what we need going forward. Were they receptive? Right. I'm, I'm really glad you asked because the amount of communication from our government, local, state, federal, has actually been very impressive. Um, Senators McSally and Cinema have done uh, many calls with us as chambers. They are hearing us. Uh, we were told that they were not able to put in some of that legislation because they were trying to get it passed quickly. And that's understandable. We understand that. And they are responsive. We do calls with the governor's office weekly um, or even more than weekly. And um, Congressman, we, we have a lot of, of communication that was surprising, quite frankly, and uh, welcomed. So the government has been wonderful. And like I said, you know, you know that you that Mayor Dickey and I have a great relationship and she's been wonderful to work with as well at the town of Fountain Hills. Yeah, let's put another plug in there because she's running on a post. We just love Mayor Dickey. Big round of applause for Mayor Dickey. <laughs> Love you, Jenny. Um, okay, so Betsy Lavoy, Chamber, uh, President and CEO, Fountain Hills Chamber. Um, so now you had a lot of your businesses that didn't get that first round. You're hopeful that maybe the second round will come through. What are you doing as a chamber? I understand you're kind of, you're shifting gears to kind of ask the community to help out. Tell me about the next and latest and greatest program. Okay, thank you so much. So one thing that we did do right away, uh, March 17th, we launched a Fountain Hills Takeout and Menus event on Facebook for all of our local restaurants. And it goes through April 30th and it's an event so that it'll populate in people's news feeds every single day. And we welcomed every single bakery, eater, or any restaurant in Fountain Hills to participate in that so that they could post what their menus were and what their policies were and that's been going very well but we do have a new campaign that we're launching tomorrow and it's called survive today thrive tomorrow and the whole idea is to really champion our local house residents to wrap around our local businesses buy vouchers, buy gift cards, and um, just flood them with business on May 1st. You know, we all were hoping and are hoping that we are gonna open up after April 30th, but I know that we don't have a clear answer for that date yet. So since we don't have a clear, a clear answer for May 1st, we want to let our businesses know that we want them to thrive tomorrow and survive today. So we just want to flood them with business. We're partnering with a, a platform called Hound, H-O-W-N-D, and people can download the app. It's free to download. Businesses can participate here in Fountain Hills. It's free to participate. Local residents can purchase vouchers. Very good. They can purchase vouchers directly on that Hound app, and Hound will send the businesses 100% of the money within 24 to 48 hours. So on May 1st, we just welcome everyone to purchase vouchers for our low businesses and it will help them survive today and thrive tomorrow. Okay, so um, Betsy Lavoy, I'm going to push back a little bit here, just a second. I'm, you know, I've been really nice. It's 13 minutes in. I want to know, I mean, look, I am all for supporting local businesses. Yes. And we've kind of bantied about the idea of buying certificates for the future. Is there any guarantee that businesses will honor these certificates later on? Be that's a great question. And because it's through the Hound platform, um, those vouchers will be honored through that platform. Now, in the unfortunate circumstance that a business goes out of business, then that patron would need to take it up directly with that business. And so there is no guarantee in that um, example. So it is a buyer beware. You know, if you buy a gift card and the company goes out of business, it's good luck getting your money back. But you know that you did good and you tried to support that business. And I know that not everyone has an extra you know, barrel of money around to buy a bunch of gift cards. And so if that's not within someone's budget here locally, we're encouraging them to write reviews for the, the local businesses, support in a non-monetary way if they're able to, and just spread, um, use this 
time to, to write Google reviews, Yelp reviews, Facebook reviews in support and um, surrounding positivity around our local businesses. Yeah, and if you don't have something nice to say, just don't say it at all. Exactly. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> My grandmother taught me that. You know what? We are in a very difficult time, and people react to these kinds of um, environments in very different ways. It's almost like there's been, you know, when we grieve lo a loss, when we grieve a death, we can't really say how that person should grieve. But we can all do better in, one, accepting other people as they are and as they express themselves during this time, but not kind of following up if somebody has expressed themselves in a, in a poor manner. <clears throat> So um, I am not against the, the Hound program. In fact, I wrote it down because I want to support the Fountain Hills businesses. I just wanted to make sure that our endorsement wasn't there as an endorsement and that people that are doing this, we, we think it's great. I think the survive then thrive is a wonderful slogan. We have to let these businesses survive for the moment. They're doing the best they can to cut back and support their workers. This is the lifeblood of our economy. What kind, I mean, you guys in Fountain Hills, you don't have a property tax. Correct. So quite frankly, this, you know, as we look at the two enclaves that are in District 23, where I'm running for the house, we have Fountain Hills and Scottsdale. Scott and Scottsdale's got a little bit more of a diversified economy. Right. Fountain Hills, what kind of, what kind of, are you predicting any kind of a percent reduction in revenues? Uh, I'm sure it's inevitable, quite frankly. Um, we're, we're just hoping and surging forward positively, trying to do everything we possibly can. Um, but yes, people, businesses are suffering. We are going to see a loss. We've already seen a loss within our local business economy, but that, and that's why we're doing everything we can as a chamber team. I've got a wonderful staff that we are all working as hard as we possibly can because we take it personally. This is our town. These are our businesses and we are here to support them in any possible way we can. And we're even open to outside the box thinking, you know, if a business comes to us and they want to try something new, we're all ears because we just want to do anything and everything we can to support our local business economy. Well, to all my Fountain Hills friends out there, think about maybe playing it forward. If you have somebody that's done something nice for you and you want to do something nice for them, think about buying something from a local business and setting them up. Give them a call on the phone and say, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite, uh, you know, what are you missing? What is it you, you, you just got to have? And then maybe set them up with something special. Do two good things at once. Right, exactly. That'd we be really have, cool. We have a chamber member, and I hope he doesn't mind if I call him out on this, but Scott Schlossberg from Farmers Insurance, he has been regularly buying uh, meals from local restaurants for takeout and bringing them to other businesses just to show their his support to them and i just love I, I thought of that when you said paying it forward i just love that idea of you know if you're doing well and you're blessed in the, your business to be able to give back and flood the rest of the businesses who might not be doing as well yeah little known fact that schlossberg still owes me five bucks ah! <laughs> for what? There's got to be a story there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't even know the guy, but I love him anyway, so I thought he could take a joke. Hey, uh, Faith Rizzolo is asking, how do you see the recovery in Arizona beginning? Well, we have to open up, first of all. I know that it's a multi-phase system, and I know that uh, Governor Ducey just announced at the press conference yesterday that we're starting with elective surgeries. I was hoping that he would expand on that, but I know it's a good place to start. Um, I am hopeful that we'll still be able to open up on May 1st, just in a very uh, limited way. I, I think that I'd probably... Um, too optimistic in that? Yes, I know. Uh, so I'm hoping that it, it'll push to the 15th of May and not to the 30th or June 1st. But I, you know, I truly as a community, we can work together to make sure that we take public health and safety seriously while still supporting our businesses. So it is going to be a slow process. It's not going to be you know, everyone opens their doors and we all flood in because that will be disastrous. So I think that if we just really approach it slowly and with patience and with grace, um, knowing that it will open up completely eventually and support our businesses as best we can in the meantime, virtually and through gift cards and vouchers and online, that that will yeah. be possible. 
And I'm going to do a little PSA here, Betsy, as you want to open early, and I'm not so convinced of that. What I can say to, to the folks out there that are listening and watching, if you are going out for your groceries or you're going out to pick up some takeout, please wear a mask. It isn't for your safety. It's for the safety of other people. I am seeing way too many people without a mask thinking they're invisible. Hey, maybe you're invincible, but you could be a carrier and not have, be symptomatic. Right. Put on a damn mask. All right? <laughs> Good PSA. Yeah, that's a PSA. Put on a damn mask. <laughs> hey, uh, I got another question for you, uh, Chamber of Commerce CEO President. This one uh, comes from Carl. He says, uh, why does the Chamber oppose the four-year mayoral term? I guess you guys have an election coming up pretty soon. All mail-in election. Yes. Um, so that is from our board of directors. They had, did take a position on the term uh, that to, really we don't see any advantage of going from two years to four years because even like Mayor Dickey's the perfect example. So she did her term of two years and then she's running again and we'll have another two years. She's running on a post. So we'll get Mayor Dickey for four years. So we don't really see any advantage to changing the term limit from two to four years when the mayor has the opportunity to rerun again. Well, here's the advantage. You're not fundraising, you're not campaigning, you're doing they the people's business. That. Right. We do understand that, but if if um, an, a mayor gets into office that is not received well, and they now have four years of not being received well by the community versus two. So there's some advantages to having a shorter term as well. And I can, I can give you the um, positioning statement from the board. I don't want to misspeak because it is their positioning statement, but um, it is on our website and it was in our newsletter and we did a press release, but we do oppose it. Look, Betsy, I, I, you know, you do what you got to do. You guys do you. I just, you know, I, I think it's incorrect, but I'm not on the chamber. I don't have a vote. But everybody else has a vote, and that's the way that's the way democracy works. Please vote, whether you're for it or against it. Have you uh, folks taken a position? I know there's a couple of other numbers out there, right? There's a what is this daybreak thing? The the propositions. So the daybreak project, um, the chamber did take a position on that. He followed the the correct procedure to get the board to either send a letter of support or not and presented how it is a benefit to the community and the board of directors did decide to uh, support the daybreak project and you know we we as a town we need more people who live here and i just always say um, our town has the capability to grow by only about seven to 10,000 more people. So allow our town to reach our potential. We're never going to be a downtown Gilbert. We're never going to be a Scottsdale. We are built out, but let us get to that potential so we can see what that looks like. And that comes from a place of being pro-business, of course. I want our businesses to have population to visit them, an increase in population um, it's beneficial for our local business economy and for our uh, our town, quite frankly. We need more revenue. Look, I, I you know what? I, since I ran the first time and I'm running again, I spent a lot of time in Fountain Hills and I just love it. I mean, I really do. It is a beautiful place. Walking around the fountain is one thing, but just driving through those hills. Yes. I mean, I, you know, if I had to choose between fountain and hills, I'd go with the hills. Yes. Yeah. I would just go hills, fountain. <laughs> I totally agree. I love it. It's a little, um, it's just a little piece of paradise that a lot of people don't realize until they spend some time here. What's the name of that Italian place that's on the third street that's closest to the, uh, to the, fount to the Fort McDowell? And they got these like little pieces of bread. It's almost like this pita bread, but it's not. It's an Italian place and they put it in the thing and they put it up. Is it right there in the corner of Shea and Sofia or something like that? So we have Sofrida's and that's the one. Or no, Sapori d'Italia. That's Sapori, that's it. Sofrida's is another good place. Sofrida's is good too, yes. We have a lot of great restaurants in town. Yeah, good happy hour. I do like walking up and down that avenue. And you have a lot of good uh, good things with the I mean, I know Mayor Dickey had a whole bunch of things going with the fountain's fiftieth anniversary. 
Yes, we are doing um, Stroll in the Golden Glow, and that's in collaboration with the Town of Fountain Hills. That's our, our holiday celebration, where Mayor Dickey will light the avenue for the holidays. And we have Santa who comes out for the children on a fire truck, and we have the community band, and it's all focused around our 50th celebration this year. So we're excited about that. 50th celebration, lighting a, what, 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 when's the menorah lighting going on? It, it happens then too. All oh, good. Time. Yes. Oh, we're all included. Hey, everybody, all let's go to Fountain Hills party. <laughs> exactly. And you know about our Thanksgiving Day Parade, don't you? I've heard about that. Yes. So I've heard, now don't quote me on this because I don't know if it's actually accurate, but I heard that we are the only parade on Thanksgiving Day, west side of the Mississippi, little old Fountain Hills. So the, the Chamber of Commerce puts on a parade and we've been doing so for over three decades. And it's lovely, it's absolutely lovely. So if you are around on Thanksgiving morning, you should come out and participate, we'd love to have you. Is there like a turkey eating contest? There should be, but no, there's not. Well, as, as long as there's no pumpkin pie, people know I'm legendary for, for hating pumpkin pie. I hate on it. I hate on it. I hate what? on it. Yeah. yeah. Give, me, give me apple pie or give me death. Hey, um, so I know you have two kids in the public schools. Um, does the chamber do anything to support the infrastructure of the public education there in Fountain Hills? Absolutely. We're proud to say that we have the superintendent of the Fountain Hills Unified School District on our board of directors. Nice. And she, yes, and um, Dr. Robert Allen is our current superintendent. And we have a new superintendent incoming in the next school year. And she's already agreed to be on our board of directors. We work closely with the PTO and the school district to make sure that they feel supported and we sponsor different programs. And absolutely, the Chamber of Commerce is not just business focused, we are community minded. Fantastic. We just have a couple of minutes left, Betsy Lavoie. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I do want to be able to say your website once again. It's fhchamberofcommerce.com? No. no. It's um, so just think fountainhillschamber.com. That's easier. So okay. if you wanted to shorten it, it's fhchamber.com, but fountainhillschamber.com. And thank you so much, Eric. I've really, I've really, it's been a privilege to be on your show this evening. Oh, stop that. Now, you, you, you do have one more campaign that I think we should touch on, right? The Save Local campaign? Is that yes. the one you're talking about? Yes, ahead. that is the Survive Today. Uh, thrive tomorrow. Okay, so, so the whole idea of buy now to save local. It's all in our work together. Okay, and once again, there's the app H O W N D, hound with a W instead of the U. Correct. Get out there and buy some things. All right, let's take you across the tracks, all right? Because I don't want you doing a Sophie's Choice about which is your favorite business in Fountain Hills. Okay. Let's just say that you go across the tracks and you head into where I live in Scottsdale. You come over that hill. Where's Betsy Lavoie going for food? <laughs> I, I, we just uh, talked about how I should be embarrassed to say this, but I love Olive Garden. <laughs> um, I have two little kids, right? You know that. So for one, I don't have a nightlife and I don't get out of Fountain Hills very much. But if we do and we go out, we go to Olive Garden because their breadsticks and Alfredo sauce are just delicious. And you know I'm okay. vegetarian, so I don't have a lot of choice. Where do people go for ice cream in Fountain Hills? Ice cream, the Tap House, 32 flavors. Oh, I didn't know that. Where is that? <laughs> it's on Parkview in Fountain Hills, and it's a great restaurant. And they have 30, I think it's 32 different flavors of ice cream. Plus, we have Choco Fin. Do you know Choco Fin? Homemade ice cream that's delicious. Homemade platier. And he is world-renowned Choco Fin. So you have to wow. check him out. Yes. You know what, they got to do a little bit of advertising because I need some ice cream sometimes. I didn't know where it was. Yes, you will not go wrong at either one of those locations. Okay, you, you've you been a wonderful guest, uh, Miss Betsy Lavoie. Remember, it is fountainhillschamber.com, right? Yes, very I finally good. got it right. Thank and you. it's Hound, H-O-W-N-D. Go out and do something good for Fountain Hills. Get over there if you're in Scottsdale and just walk around the fountain and check it out. I bet, you know, there's a lot of, I'm just going to go on my own here. There's a lot of people that thinks Fountain Hills is old and cranky. It is not. 
they're some of the nicest people. A lot of Midwestern roots have uh, kind of relocated into the Fountain Hills area. The nicest people, some beautiful golf courses, great resorts, good restaurants, and just unbelievable scenery. Betsy Lavoy, you've been a pleasure. See you soon, okay? Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. Okay. We dance off now. Ready to dance? Do. Go ahead. Dance. Hey. No, Mayor Dickey didn't, so I'm not going to either. I can do okay. it. Okay. Thank you.